Somebody needs to pay for all my children. Somebody needs to be held accountable, and they need to pay. Hey everybody, you know, I wasn't even going to do an article today because it's like, it used to be there was crazy shit all the time, but now it kind of dried up, but then I found this article and I said, eh, what the hell, let's do one, because I got nothing better to do, I'm sitting here screeching my ass, and this one is written by Dina Landon, 20 hours ago everybody, it's like brandy new. I talked to my son about my period when he was four years old. <laughs> that poor kid, man. He's gonna be traumatized. If the men who formulate policy and write laws knew more about how women's body works, maybe they'd be less likely to legislate them. Here's a little tip, lady. We get how it works. It's just gross, and we'd rather not talk about it. <laughs> Bitches like to think they're so complicated, but... We all get it. We just don't want to talk about it. And you're ruining your kid. All right, here we go. I didn't set out to be a crud, crunchy granola hippie mom. Sure, I breastfed my son until he was two, and I made all his baby food from scratch. I cloth diapered, but that was more about saving money than being an oith mama. In my childhood, growing up in Seattle, taking ballet classes in the same building as Greenpeace might have rubbed off on me more than I realized. Even still, I usually asked my husband to keep a toddler out of the bathroom when I needed to take care of my feminine hygiene needs. But after my divorce, of course, that guy got the hell out of here. See you, you weirdo annoying bitch. I'm heading for the hills. I didn't have anyone to distract him. And one day he boisted in on me, changing a tampon. Mid-string pulling. <laughs> Mommy, what are you doing? He asked. I finished pulling it out and tossing it in the waste basket. Changing my tampon, kiddo. His eyes got really wide. Is they blood? Yes, I a matter, matter of factly unwrapped the next one and did my business. His lower lip started to quiver, and he looked mildly panicked. But you're bleeding. Are you gonna die, Mumsy? Mumsy, are you dying or something? No, honey, I ain't going to die. I closed the toilet lid and sat down, pulling him into my disgusting bloody lap. And he did my and did my best to explain about urine, <laughs> uterine linings, and babies and monthly flow. This kid's four years old, lady. Can you live? Can you let him live in happy little kid world for a few years? Do you have to destroy him with the realities of life so early? <laughs> so you're bleeding because there's not a baby in you. Kind of, yes. Then we need to find a deity to put a baby in you right now so you don't go on and die, Mumsy. Right. Mommy fail, I started over. When I told him one of when I told one of my Goyle friends about the incident a few days later because I thought it was funny, she gave me a strange look. You let your son see you changing your tampon, you disgusting mutt. I started to feel a little defensive. Well, I didn't let him, it just kind of happened. She's married and has a husband to wrangle the kids and keep them at a debate room. The one time I tried shutting the door, I'd come out to find that my son had pulled the dining room chair over the kitchen counter cause he's retarded and climbed up on top to get the candy stash. I pee with the door open. Isn't that kinda gross you fucking pig you? Her question took me back. Cis woman and some trans men 
bleed over 30 years of our lifespan. <laughs> Trans men. You had to fit that in there. You had to shoehorn that in there. In, in there, didn't you, you slob? Some estimates place the total cost of a woman's period over a lifetime around 18 grand. Righteous it's fuck. not something we can control or stamp unless we pay for birth control and other methods. It's a normal thing, so why do we view it as gross, something to hide or be ashamed of? I hope that woman's friend never talked to her again. She's a happily married woman and she knows how to run shit and she's got this creep just ghouling it up in her house. I showed my son my disgusting bloody snitch. My son is now five and he's been buying me boxes of tampons and panty liners in Target. <laughs> oh man. She, see, these feminist bitches, they think it's okay not to have a dad and raise these kids like this. And then their kid grows up to be a fucking snapperist and they wonder what happened. Oh, mumsy, here's your panty liners. I think these would look good on me too, mumsy. He's pointed to a super box and said, I think you're gonna need that one, mommy. I think you're gonna need the big one because you got a big snitch. I've managed to keep him out of the bathroom since that day mostly, but he's aware that it's a monthly thing that happens and I don't die. Google men's misconceptions about women's periods and you'll get a good life. It's obvious that men still need to be educated about the realities of a monthly flow. I don't think it's healthy for either male or female bodies to be fueled with fear or ignorance. If there was a little more knowledge, there might be more understanding. In many states, menstrual products are still taxed as luxury goods. I have to wonder. If the mothers of the men who passed these laws had been more open with their sons about their periods, would they still view it as a luxury? Worldwide, Goyles miss school every day due to their periods. In Nepal, 30% of girls miss school every month. Hey man, missing school is good sometimes. You, you, you pretty much could just show up one day a week and pick it up. I wouldn't worry about it, lady. And in Africa, one in 10 girls doesn't go to school during her period. Cultural traditions that force, force isolation during that time of the month contribute to that problem. Hey man, you know, they used to just throw them in the shed out back when that was going on. I don't know. That seems reasonable. Get out of the house, you slob. I'm just kidding to the two bitches who watch my channel, but you, you know what I mean. I'm just kidding. But so does the simple fact that many girls lack access to sanitary products. The box of tampons I buy every month with my son is out of reach, both financially and in terms of availability. For many girls around the world, the days of school that they miss can ripple through their lives as poorly educational achievement leads to fewer employment opportunities, which in turn leads to repeating the cycle of poverty. Viewing our periods as gross or something to be shamed of holds women back in very real ways. A gig, gig, gig. This bitch is creepy, man. She's just a creepy bitch. <laughs> Leave your kid alone. Stop fucking tormenting him. This kid's gonna need therapy forever. Forever. <sighs> While I don't plan on talking to my son. <laughs> While I didn't plan on talking to my son about my period at age four. I'm glad that I did because the kid's a total fucking weirdo. He runs around, screams, and foams at the mouth. He drinks the stuff under the table. I did a good job as a mother. True, it won't solve the world's problems, but if we could talk more openly and without shame about a natural, normal part of life, then maybe it would be easier to come up with 
and implement solutions to those problems. If the men who formulate policy and write laws knew a <laughs> and write laws knew more about how women's bodies works, maybe they'd be less likely to legislate them. When ignorance is replaced with understanding, change happens. Will my son be part of that change? Who knows? But at least he'll know the difference between super and regular tampons if someday his girlfriend sends him to the store to pick up a box. <laughs> Hey, 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 hey,